Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are continuing our My Five series where we are asking photographers to talk about five image that have in, images that have influenced them in some way. And today, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or the Milwaukee area, is Nicole Horvath. Well, welcome to The Crit House. Thank you very much for having me, Jeff. So um, uh, you are one of the viewers who was one of the first people to take the my five hashtag and put it up on, on Instagram. And we had been talking about that beforehand. So we'd like, I would like to encourage you all to do that, to um, tell us what your five images are, put them up on Instagram and maybe uh, uh, tag us as well. So that we know what's out there. Um, and Nicole, you have five images that uh, are, are um, very interesting to talk about. Looking forward to getting there. But may, for, before we get there, Tell me a little bit about like how you think of yourself as a photographer. How do you talk about yourself? I think I most easily talk about myself as a street photographer. Um, there's a part of me that resists that and I just want to be a photographer. Um, and I certainly take pictures that aren't street per se. So um, but first and foremost, I think of myself as an amateur photographer. I'm always learning and um but I am very involved in photography, in street photography. I'm trying to continually educate myself through workshops. Um, but what I what I do as well is curate for women street photographers weekly. Uh, it's actually right now it's bi monthly hashtag uh, challenge, and that's with Golnara Samolova. So I try and keep my finger in uh, photography as much as I possibly can. Well, so you, you said something that, that resonates with me a lot, that you're a, pr a proud amateur photographer. And yes. I mean, I, I have to, I'm an amateur photographer and, and uh, I like to, um, I don't speak French, but my understanding is that the French definition of amateur has something to do with saying it's the love of something, which <laughs> is, you know, I mean, we think of it in America as being like, y'all, you're not making any money with it, but, the, but the French is the love of it. And so uh, I also think of myself proudly as an amateur photographer so I love we that. have yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. It's, right. it's definitely the love of it i i don't seek uh anything monetarily <laughs> well i wouldn't turn it away, <laughs> I wouldn't turn it away. <laughs> so uh, so nicole tell us um we had we talked about five images what, what did you go through in deciding what your five images was it hard was it easy was it it was hard because you feel like you're narrowing down five moments of your life. Um, and then I realized that was, you know, taking it a little bit too seriously, just try and pick five images. And it made the most sense to pick five images that for me growing up had some value, some meaning to me for one reason or another. Um, I did go to art school um, and my father was an artist. So I have those influences. Um, and I think that's where some of these images came from. You are starting with a non-photograph from Toulouse-Lautrec. Tell us why yeah. this is in your five. So this was a life-size poster that hung over my bed for a good part of my childhood. Um, it was just so um, extraordinary for its life-size uh, quality. It's um, the cape and the scarf. There's something very dramatic about it. And that's how I was introduced to uh, Henri Toulouse Track. And so I, I see many, many other of his images are equally as worthy, um, but this was the one that I had and it held my attention for so many years. Um, and it is such a contrast to his own life. One of the things I find interesting about photographers and artists in general is that their lives are often so very different from their art. And he was, um, he was kind of an outcast. He was very short. Uh, he broke one of his legs when he was 13, another when he was 14. Mm. And so he never really grew into being, um, I think his full height, whatever that would have been. And so Aristide Brant is a larger than life character and was also very good friends with him. Well, so when we had Sam Abel on with the uh, the first program we did here on the Y5, he had an image from the the uh, the wind in the willows, which was just a map, uh, as being one of his five, and I love that um, people are recognizing those influences from early in their lives, which is what you've done here is something that has uh, brought you forward. So your second image comes from the great Annie Leibovitz. Of yeah, Annie Leibovitz. Demi Moore. It's it's interesting because I did a little bit of reading on these images uh, just so I was uh, knew what I was talking about and. <laughs> 
things I came across was Annie Leibovitz. This is not her favorite photograph by any means. She no. feels very um, upset that uh, Demi Moore wasn't fully nude, which of course for the cover of Vanity Fair was not possible. Um, and I'd agree, it is unfortunate that she's covering herself up um, at, for such a beautiful thing. I mean, she's pregnant, she's almost fully pregnant. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, I do look at it and think of it as a beautiful photograph. Annie Leibovitz is my favorite uh, photographer. I've, I've gleaned the most from her over the years. I could have chosen any one of her pictures. Um, and I like that she, they said specifically, she must cover up for this. And she did the complete opposite as much as she could. Yeah. Yeah. Within the, you know, the context of, you know, the expectations. Um, so I like that about her. She does that a lot with her photography. Well, it's a it's a great image, and I I I do think that I mean I know of obviously Annie Leibovitz's work and how uh, diverse it it is, um, but I'm glad to see a selection from from her in here. Um, so thank you for that. Your third image is now Cindy Sherman. Cindy Sherman. Hopefully, this is somebody something iconic that everyone knows. Uh, Cindy Sherman. I think she's just great. She you know her. Her images are all about identity. Um, the backstory behind this particular image and several of the film stills, this is film still number 21 for mm -hmm. geeks out there, is that she would walk around with a suitcase in New York City and perhaps other places, but New York City is the one I'm most familiar with. And she would just take out the clothes that she had, set up and shoot. And these were stills of, they were tropes of women um, from B movies, from foreign films, and it was kind of showing the um, how it could be it it could be anyone, and um, the identity part of it is what got me the most. I was questioning my own sexuality when I was young, and so to see that somebody else was playing around with identity in a different way, of course, mm -hmm. uh, held uh, a lot for me. Um, also, as a photographer, and you're always looking for a subject as a street photographer. It's like oh. Okay, <laughs> just put yourself in the image, right, right? And you've got a picture. So I thought that was somewhat ingenious. I really appreciated that about the photo about her photographing. Um, and I still follow her to this day. She's still playing around with identity. Yeah. Uh, so it, what kind of work is she doing now? She's Same doing. Stuff, she was for a long time doing stuff on Instagram, and she was playing around with the um, uh, like the different uh, images that you can create on Instagram, the different filters, uh -huh. right? And I, I don't see them as much anymore, but every once in a while it will pop up and it's really is about age. She's playing around with age and aging and the aging process and women in particular aging. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to follow her. I'm not, uh, I'm not currently doing that. So as, and, and as you're talking about this, you know, what goes through my mind is, well, wouldn't it be really interesting to know what five images Cindy Sherman would choose in a discussion like this? It would be, Absolutely. That'd be fair. In fact, uh, Cindy Sherman and Annie Leibovitz as well, for that matter. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. All right. I wonder if I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will watch it. <laughs> your, no, your fourth image is another iconic one from Richard Avedon. Yeah, Richard Avedon's an interesting photographer. I think he was, um, I think he was somewhat of a tortured soul, which is uh, always of interest to me. I think um, he, one of the things he did say is that he photographed the things that scared him. This most mm -hmm. certainly is a scary picture. It's, it's, it's in fact somewhat horrifying, I think, to see all these bees covered in this man. Um, this was part of his West series. And he actually took a lot of criticism for it, um, which is unfortunate. But part of that criticism was that he didn't accurately represent people of the West because what he did is he went out there and he had a white sheet and mm -hmm. that was the backdrop. And then he had his lights and his camera and bam, took the picture. And I think that that's a misunderstanding um, of what he was doing. And I think he really captured, when I look at this picture in particular, really captured their soul. Um, this guy is, I mean, he was bitten four times during this, I think it was a solid hour, maybe two hours that they did yeah. this. He was and, a beekeeper, right? Yep, he was a yeah. beekeeper and he answered an ad that Avedon had put out. And what they did was they took pheromones and spread them all over his body mm, yeah. in a specific way so that the bees would cover him in a specific way. In a pattern, yeah. Mm. But one of the things Avedon said that I find um, 
really uh, interesting is specifically he says, there is no such thing as inaccuracy in a photograph. All photographs are accurate. None of them is the truth. Um, and I think you could look at that. You could look at a lot of the photographers we're looking at maybe overall of your series and just it's like, yeah, what what is the truth here? What are we really talking about? What it, what's accurate versus the truth? Or what is the truth that we're bringing to it? Our, exactly. our own view. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Good, good description. Good, good image. Thanks. Now, this one, I, I think before we started, I said, I thought this was from, from somebody else, but it's a Larry Sultan image. Tell us about this and why this is here. So this was a picture I had for a really long time. It, it was, it captured me. The colors were beautiful. Um, yes. The, the silkiness of her shirt, the texture. Um, but of course, it's what's going on in the picture. Um, she is looking directly through. So she's breaking this frame. His uh, father, and this is his mother and father. And oh, it is, father, okay. Yep, it is. And his father's watching the ball game. And there were many pictures. He chronicled the family, and there were many pictures he took of his parents. Um, mostly, he took a lot of his father that you saw, at least the ones that came through ultimately. Um, but his mother is in a lot of these pictures. And the interesting thing for me about the picture is her looking back. So then again, what's the truth and what's accurate? What's yeah. she posing? She doesn't look like she's posing. She looks like she's very impatiently waiting or maybe patiently waiting for her husband to finish watching the ball game. So perhaps they can go out for dinner or something. <laughs> it's hard to know, but um, he has lots of pictures like this and I, I find it very interesting. Well, it's in it, and it it goes back to that little piece you were just talking about with the uh, 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 Richard Avedon image about truth. Like, what is the truth? And exactly. and and this is this is one of those images where we all have our own history, and we all come from a certain place, and we all have our own view of what this probably is based on what our past is like and our families are like as well. So, uh, Nicole, thank you so much for showing your images. Thank you for hashtagging my five on Instagram and reaching out about, uh, about, uh, the, the, the crit house as well. Um, I encourage everyone to do it. Yeah, please do. It's, I, I actually think it's one of those things that could, it could become you know, viral. Um, cause I, I want to see, I want to see what the five images of my friends are. I want to see where they, what, what has influenced them. And so I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what, uh, what other people are doing, um, whether you're, a prep professional and you've been doing this for your career or you're just starting off in photography what are those five images that have caught your eye and take you a certain direction so so thank you for showing and joining us here on the crit house i know you were a little nervous to start off with but it wasn't that pain, wasn't that painful was it no it wasn't it was fun it was fun <laughs> thank you so much jeff Thank you. And so everybody out there, as Nicole did, if you are interested in showing your five images on the Crit House, use the hashtag my five and tag us at the Crit House and perhaps we'll have you on as well. Thank you all for watching the Crit House.